Hello and welcome to Mandarins. My name is Melody and this is episode 21. You can find me on Instagram as bmandarins and mandarins on Ravelry. And we also have a Ravelry group um, which is mandarins. So you can join in and participate, participate in the threads. So it's been a month since I last recorded and I actually just recorded a one hour episode. I just finished recording and I just wanted to try to record on my phone because I'm not very pleased with the quality of my laptop's camera and the file is way too heavy and I have no way to upload it to my computer. So yeah, I just don't really know what to do with that. So I think I'm gonna keep uh, recording um, with a computer at the moment until I figure uh, something better. But um, yeah, the, the previous episodes I was distracted by the drilling and the chickadees outside. I was constantly looking outside because <clears throat> I have set up a little birdhouse on the balcony and they are having a blast. Um, my balcony is their little playground. I've hanged a couple of things outside and I have um, golden rod that is drying outside and just they just love to look at everything and play with things and it's very destructive so basically I was talking to you and looking outside all the time so if I ever look outside and have a smile on my face it's because there's a chicken that is most probably staring at me and wonder wondering what I'm what I'm doing so yeah just wanted to let you know that um I don't have coffee anymore uh, I don't have anything to drink anymore because I wasn't expecting Expected to expecting to record um, another time, so it's okay. <laughs> it's Friday. The weekend is tomorrow, so it's okay. Um, in the meantime, I have done. I, I wrote down some show notes, so I won't go all over the place like the previous episode that I just recorded. So yes, so um, I'm. First, going to talk about my work, works in progress. So, um, I have a couple of things on the needles, things that I cannot show you yet, obviously, um, because these are patterns that are going to come out in January, most probably. Um, so, I'm going to show you some personal, personal knitting at the moment. If you remember a couple podcast episodes ago, so that was a couple of months ago, I was knitting on my quill by Jared Flood, uh, which was published in Wool People, I think, autumn of spring 2014. And I've knit a little bit on it. Um, I'm on the border at the moment, but I was supposed to turn a corner and I forgot that there's a special technique to do... Um, at this point and I completely forgot to do it so I kept knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and then I realized that my corner was a bit wonky and that's because I didn't um, knit properly so I will have to go back and um, and do it properly this time so that slowed me down quite a bit because um, at some point that was my only personal work in progress and I I really put a dent in it and now I'm <laughs> back to where I was, more or less. So, um, on the needles, I have a little pair of slippers. Um, these are, I think they are called the little house slippers. Um, I will insert links for the pattern, um, but it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's from Temple of Knits. Um, and this is a Christmas present for my partner. Um, I have used Let Lopi in the Ash Grey colorway and the white one is Labian Wool. So I think that the grey one is worsty weight and the white one is fingering weight. 
And the pattern is very simple. You basically um, knit in garter stitch flat up to here, and then you join to work in the round and you seam the back. So it's very, very easy. And I think it took me maybe four hours to make this one. And I'm working on the second one. So yeah, I have I have to knit on that um, when my partner is not here, obviously, but usually that's my working time. So it's a bit challenging to work on that, uh, to be honest. Um, and I've just finished a pair that I knit for myself. I think I finished it a week ago and I've been wearing it ever since. Um, so this is the first pair that I've made. I I just wash them because on the 31st for Halloween we were carving pumpkins and I threw pumpkin all over the floor and I was I had just finished my pair of sleepers and it was so sticky on the bottom part because obviously I stepped in what was left of the pumpkin massacre so <laughs> I just washed them um, and I have used merino wool and so the merino the grayish um, creamish grayish part I have dyed it with mushrooms last year and the pink is with avocados so they look like that and they are very very cozy super cute I just love them. My mom was really funny um, because she saw my post on Instagram and she was like, they're so cute. I want a pair for myself. And um, I didn't tell her that I need her a pair of Woodland Tales mittens, obviously. So I won't be able to knit her anything else for Christmas for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> So I'm knitting that for my partner and he was really excited when he saw mine because um, um, the design, this part, uh, reminds him of Chinese shoes, Chinese um, Kung Fu shoes, uh, you know, martial arts. And it's something that he really likes. So he was like, I want a pair, I want a pair. And I was like, mm, just maybe, maybe later, we'll see. <laughs> so... That's on my needles. Um, for the finished objects, is that, yes, that's next on my list. I, I think the last time that we spoke, I was still knitting on the Babbly hat by Donna Smith. So that's the hat for um, the Shetland Wool Week 2015. And we had a knit along um, for this hat. And I will draw the winners this afternoon and announce them on Ravelry. Um, there's so many beautiful different um, finished hats in the thread. You can um, go and see that's the um, Shetland Will Be KL group on Ravelry. And yeah, we've been sponsored by Jamisons of Shetland this year and by the 60 Degree North magazine. Um, so I will announce the winners this afternoon. But my hat is done and I have knitted using Jamison's Heather, um, Shetland Heather in the Is It Colorway, this color. Then I have used um, Highland Mist for the blue and Wood Nymph for the green. And the gray part is um, let low be the same one that I'm using for the sleepers. And I just love how this hat turned out. I'm wearing it constantly. I love the folded brim and it, it's extremely warm because there's two colors um, all the way up. So it's gonna be a wonderful piece to wear this winter when it's gonna be very, very cold. And we might have a really cold winter this year, so. Yeah, that's definitely a staple in my wardrobe. So I'm really excited about this one. Then, um, I have also finished 
a hat yesterday. Um, so I need actually two of them. Um, hopefully next week um, my shop will be open and I will be selling my yarn. And for that I decided to design a hat using my own yarn. So this is the yarn that is going to come up very soon. This is how it looks. And I'm selling Avranchine yarn, which is a French breed of sheep. And Avranchine is the softest French wool after Merino. So I'm selling French country yarn. So it's yarn that comes straight from the farm in France. This is a breed. Um, I think that is only raised in France. That's a breed local to France. And that's a breed that originally comes from Brittany in France. And I dyed the yarn myself with um, chalk berries a little while back. And I just love the color variation. So I will have a couple of skins in the shop, um, hopefully next week. And I just wanted to create a pattern with this yarn. So this is the Art Deco hat that I've designed with my yarn. This one, uh, this um, hat was dyed with avocados. And that's the hat. And I just love the way it turned out. I just love this hat so, so much. The stitch pattern was really, really addictive. Um, I just didn't want to stop, really, um, because I just love seeing the pattern being created. So this is how it looks. So it's a quite fitted hat um, that covers um, the forehead and the ears. But it's, I guess, mostly a hat to wear in the autumn or in the spring. Um, I mean, that depends if you have really um, cold winters or not. But for here, it might be not warm enough because it's um, a lot of lace inside and the wind is going to blow. So, but it's not that cold yet, so I can wear it now and I will be able to wear it um, this spring as well. So I'm really, really excited. And obviously, the little stitch pattern really reminded me of the Art Deco patterns. Um, so I just, yeah, when I when I designed the hat, the first thing that came to my mind was Art Deco. So this is the Art Deco hat that will be available very, very soon. Um, I will keep you updated on Instagram and on Ravelry um, when the pattern will be available. But I think... It will be um, very soon. <laughs> and because I know that the hat, um, the yarn that I'm creating won't be available in very large quantities, so I wanted to make the hat available in, in another yarn. So I've made a bit of research and, um, and wanted to um, have yarn substitution for the pattern. So I have finished this one yesterday and this is 100% Merino, French Merino yarn. I knit it with the Maco Merinos sheep and the yarn is Durham Natra Penelope in the Heather colorway. Uh, so I have used two skins of that, uh, two skins. So. Um, one ball comes in 50 grams and, that, and that's 133 meters and I've just I've used less than a skin and a half but you definitely need two skins to make the hat and my yarn comes in 260 meters so that's 284 yards so you will have plenty of leftover from that for sure and I just I just love the stitch definition in both of the yarns. 
it shows the stitch so so well they, they really look cute together really and I just could see myself uh, knitting just more and more and I'd love to see them you know in a shop with a nice logo and have different colors I think they're really really cute so um, yeah and for the colorways I wasn't really sure actually um, which color I would I would buy because um, the room natura is starting to carry um, different yarns so different weights of yarn in different colorways and I wasn't sure at all which colors to get so I was really drawn to um, Aurore, which is this coral, and Bruyère, which is heather, and I didn't know which yarn to use, so I asked you uh, on Instagram, and a lot of you recommended me to use the, gray, the, the purple one, and that's the one that I decided to use, so I have two skins left, two balls left of the coral, and it's super, super cute, it's very springy. Summery springy as well, and the yarn is wonderful. So, yeah, that's it for my finished objects. A lot of hats. I guess I guess it's the hat season, really. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of hats. I haven't shown you this this one. Yeah, this is how it looks. It's super, super cute. It's a bit slouchy on the back. Um, it has, yes, a bit of slouch here. Um, but I really love the shape of the hat and the crown decreases and just, just the stitch in itself. There you go. I hope you cannot hear my stomach. It's one and I'm really hungry. <laughs> So, Art Deco will be available, available very soon, hopefully. Um, then, Stash Enhancement, yes. So, that goes in the Stash Enhancement and Future Projects. Ah, I'm dropping everything. Future Projects if you will. So, um, my friend Anna from Gregoria Fibers um, will be moving back to Spain uh, very soon. She's actually from Spain, uh, but she's been living in Germany for two years. And, you know, <laughs> she's a knitter and she loves yarn. And when you're abroad, it's very hard sometimes not to buy yarn, even though you know that someday you will come back home and that you will have to deal with sending back everything that you bought. And she bought quite a bit of yarn and she wasn't sure if she would be knitting with this yarn ever. So she asked me if I would, um, if I would want to take care of them. So she sent me these three adorable cones of Lana de España and so this is Spanish wool it's rustic um, I guess you could call them country country yarn as well and I'm not sure of what to do with them yet but um, I, I, I pinned um, a picture on Pinterest not so long ago and it was, I don't, I don't know what was the pattern or anything. It just, I could see just a bit of the texture and the colors were cl very close to that. Um, they were using cream and pink like this. So I'm actually thinking of making maybe some brioche. I don't know. I haven't done brioche ever, but, um, I don't really have plans for the yarn and I know that it's very special. So I think, yeah, a little cowl, botanical cowl in brioche could be really neat. And look at this logo. Isn't he the cutest? It's a little, I think that's a little lion with his fur, you know, around his neck. 
That's so cute. And the little sheep on the back. I just love the logo so much. And, you know, I, I know that I want to make something with this yarn, but at the same time, they're so cute. <laughs> and I can, I can show you, I think. It just, um, I have different places where I keep my yarn and I recently purchased um, this basket because it's not that my stash is getting out of control, but it's just, I have this long table right now and I like to, you know, have some yarn around um, that I could play with or I could plan to um, to knit something with the yarn, you know, just, just to get inspired. So this is my basket of happiness, if you will. <laughs> have different yarns in there very different yarns uh, from the different parts of the world. Um, so I have Spain, United States, um, Scotland, Estonia, France, more Spain, Norway, United States. I mean, Peru, there's almost all the continents. I would like to have some Japanese wool maybe in there. <laughs> so yeah, just just love this little basket. And some other yarn that I have um, is this one. This is the Jamison's Shetland Heather, um, which is 100% Shetland wool. And I'm planning to knit a goldenwood cowl out of this yarn. I have three skins, so that would be perfect. <laughs> goldenwood is um, a pattern that I have created recently for the very, the very first issue of Sidsbit Starbucks, which is called Unearth. And goldenwood is a little cowl that features um, a tree of life stitch and some botanical lace. And it's clo it is closed on the back with three little buttons. And this cowl is very special to me. Um, it was inspired by a lot of the rings. <laughs> you know, like one day when I was watching the very first movie, What's More, I really got inspired and decided to create um, a pattern inspired by the woods that were... Um, that are shown in in the movie so I was I was sketching as I was watching the movie and just came up with that pattern and um, when I went to Estonia the last time I bought um, little I don't know if I have them here little handmade buttons that were made out of apple tree I think I have one left and I'm planning to go back to Estonia probably next weekend so I will get more of them but they are handmade <laughs> on my nose <laughs> they are handmade um, and they worked so well on the cow so yeah I'm planning to go and probably buy a jar of them really because they are the cutest um, buttons ever and they have different um, Different ones made out of different trees, so I just I just love that. And because the pattern was inspired by the woods, I just thought that closing the closing the cowl with um, a wooden button was just the perfect perfect thing. So I will be casting that on this weekend, and probably bring it with me um, in the bus when I will go to Tallinn, Estonia, and just. Um, just dream about the cow because I have um, the hat, the babli hat, uh, the sheeps are knit in the exact same color. So that could be very neat to have, you know, not really matching um, cow and hat, but just the colors that would work together. So yeah, planning to do that very soon. And the second pattern that I have um, created for the Unearth magazine, I mean the six-bit Starbucks, but the first issue is Unearth, 
it's this discovery scarf. Um, it's a very long scarf um, that features a really beautiful medallion stitch. Um, so the scarf is really, really long. You can wrap it twice around your neck. And I've used Bucalview 100% Superfan Alpaca wool um, to, knit the, to knit the scarf. And it was just just such a, a pleasure to knit on this scarf, really. And I just love how um, the pictures of the pattern um, turned out. I just... I just love them so so much and there's um, we have a knit along for the first issue so it's called the Unearth KL. You can check it out on Ravelry uh, in the Six Bit Storybox um, group or you can check it out with the hashtag Unearth KL on Instagram and see the the works in progress already. Um, there's a couple of golden wood there's uh, that are that are being knit. There's one um, that is knit out of hand spun and that's very pretty. And there's another one um, that is using um, naturally dyed yarn and I just love the color variation. It's very very beautiful. <laughs> then I wanted to show you something else that is very special. Um, my friend Lee who's Lee Sai Knits on Instagram. She has the most beautiful Instagram feed, really. She's such, such a good knitter. Um, she's really good at color work and she loves to knit with um, not rustic yarn, but, you know, um, Shetland yarn, Jemison and Smith, um, two ply jumper or the one that I've just shown you, Jemison, um, Heather, um, and she just she just really needs needs the most the most beautiful things and I think about a month ago she shared on her Instagram feed um, some yarn that she hand spun and I just fell in love with what she made and she just she just kindly asked me if I would like to receive a little bit of leftover from from that special yarn and of course I said yes and she sent it to me and so I don't know if you can see but it's very shiny and it's it's goldish and pink and it's very very beautiful mm. the yarn was mm -hmm. The yarn um, is from sheep that are raised in Vermont, and I think it's dyed there as well. And I keep looking at it, it's on my desk every day. I keep looking at it as I work, and I just want to make special out of it. Lee told me that I could make a you know, a, a coaster for one of my mugs or something like that. But I really want to make something more special um, out of it and just look at it over and over. So I'm actually thinking of making a little bird of happiness, which is something that I've never done before. But I think that I will have enough yarn for that. And I have a lot of things um, hanging here on my desk. I have a lot of botanical uh, botanical things like dried dried flowers, uh, dried plants. I have massive pumpkin over there, um, and just to have um, some garlands hanging, natural garlands with leaves that I coated with wax and things like that. I don't know if I if I can show you. Maybe you can see. This is coated with wax. I gathered um, some leaves before they will completely dry out and coated them. And I've used some physalis as well, which are, I think they're also known as Chinese lanterns. And... <laughs> 
here they are. They are the cutest thing ever. And I cut these parts on some of the branches that I had and I just hang them so they are turning because it's quite windy. You have very old window frames and so the, way, the wind is um, blowing through and they are always turning, hanging and it's, it's so cute. So I have a lot of things hanging and I thought I could have a little bird of happiness with that special yarn that could shine, you know. So, yeah. Or maybe hang it on my um, basket of happiness. I don't know. <laughs> um, then, I have been doing some journaling lately. Um, it's something that I do every time that I finish a pattern. Um, I take a lot of notes when I create a pattern and um, it's very messy. I have a couple of notebooks and it's very, very messy. And when I'm done with a pattern, I like to um, keep everything clean and, you know, just keep memories of what I did. So this is the page for the Goldenwood pattern. So the cow that I have created looks like this. It has a little tree of life stitch over here and this part is this beautiful fur cone um, botanical stitch which is an it's a stitch that um, originally um, was created in Shetland it's a traditional Shetland stitch and the cowl is yeah you can see the bottom holes and here are the little buttons and I've designed the cowl in by Annie Claire, full belly feels good. So this is this yarn, and for yarn substitution, you can use quince and co lark, and have a bit left of chickadee. No, um, honey colorway. <laughs> so that's the yarn, and this is um, a tape that I bought in Tallinn when I last went there. I just love it so much. And here is the article hat <laughs> so I just love I just love doing that I I journal in um, this little notebook that I bought in in Tallinn as well and I'm planning to buy some more um, hopefully next weekend then um, I have a project that is called uh, the Botanical Embroidery Project, or I don't remember how I call it exactly, um, but it's a project that I started a couple of months ago, maybe a year ago actually, and I'm just basically doing embroidery um, um, inspired by flowers, um, that I've discovered here in Latvia. Um, so I have I have made two so far, and I'm planning to make more, um, especially with the physalis, the um, Chinese lantern flower plant. I don't know if it's a flower. I think it's a fruit actually. So I'm planning to make one soon. And recently I've been missing doing embroidery, and because I don't have a lot of colors, actually I went to the craft shop the other day to buy more colors and I started doing this little project so it features um, it's not botanical embroidery but um, I just thought of keeping my cozy things in one place so I have yarn I have my crane scissors here is a little mug with tea um, here is a hat that is way too small, so I will make it much bigger. Some needles, and I have plenty of space to add more embroider, embroidery things as well. Um, and I love the fabric. I bought this fabric, I think, last year in one of the many charity shops that we have here. And I think I bought about two meters of this fabric, and it cost me like 50 cents, something like that. So... Yeah, I just, I just love the fabric so, so much. And 
the plan in the future is in my future little cottage in France. Um, the plan is to have a wall um, full of different um, yeah, embroidery memories and when I will look back at <laughs> sorry chickadees when I will look back at um, this project I could reflect to um, you know just to remember the good times that I had um, thinking about a, spe a specific um, piece that I made so yeah, I just love that. And I'm keeping it in a little bag that my friend Dawn, who's, um, I will include the links, the links um, in the show notes, but she, uh, she made me this little bag um, with fabric that she bought at a verb for keeping warm. And this is organic cotton and this bag is really one of my favorites. I use it all the time. The other day I um, I spent the weekend out and I didn't know what to what kind of craft I could take with me. So I put my embroidery hoop inside, three skins and a hat that I was working on and that was that was it. It's, it's as massive as it looks. And she recently started selling bags. Um, in her ba in her shop, and she has a little um, embroidered sheeps in the middle, and they are really really beautiful. They are so well made. Um, so yeah, I highly suggest you to check her out. Um, then I have been watching. The last episode of Danny from Little Bobbins Knits, and in in her podcast, she shown us two skins of Bergère de France yarn that she bought. And <sighs> yesterday, I placed an order to buy the exact same yarn in the same colorway because I just I just really really fell in love with the yarn. It's a blend of wool and polyamide. It's a sock sock yarn. And, you know, it's getting very cold here and I don't really want to buy socks, you know, commercial socks or things like that. And I don't have a lot of socks to wear. Um, I mostly wear dresses, so I have tights, but I don't have socks. So, yeah, I've been thinking of making socks lately, even though that's not my favorite thing to knit. I just thought, like, if I would have a good pattern in mind and a good yarn in my hands, that could definitely happen. So the yarn is on its way and I've also bought a, a pair of, um, my goodness, what was the brand? Adi, yeah, Adi needles fixed two millimeters. And I think that's a 60 inches cable. So I should do some magic loop, I think, hopefully. I have DPNs as well, but you know, I just wanted to have another options if the DPNs don't work. And the pattern that I have in mind is actually um, the Agatha Socks by um, Claire from the New Hampshire Knits podcast. Um, she recently came out with her first pattern and I just, I just fell in love with the pattern so, so much. And I've been wanting to cast it on for, as, I mean, as soon as I saw it, I wanted to cast it on, but, you know, I've been quite limited with the time. So I bought the yarn, it should arrive soon, hopefully, and the plan is to start knitting it in the plane when I will go back to France. So I will go back on the 15th of December and I will be back to Latvia on the 29th. So the plan is to just enjoy knitting this pair of socks when I will be in France for Christmas. So I'm super, super excited about that. I will bring that with me and, you know, knit in the plane, hopefully. Fingers crossed, knit in the plane and just enjoy some simple knitting and I will come back with a new pair of socks. So I'm super, super excited about that. Um, so yes, and speaking of Claire, 
Um, I've actually been interviewed by, by her a couple of weeks ago, and in her previous podcast, um, you can listen to it, and we've been chatting about different things, about uh, my yarn that should come out soon, and how I started knitting, and um, creating patterns, and things like that, so yeah, you could check it out. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Okay, um, in the Ravelry group, I also set up a thread um, a little while back, and that is where you can ask me questions if you have any questions for me. And there's been a lot, um, there's, there's been a couple of questions, and I haven't um, answered to all of them yet. So I thought of selecting two of them this time and just answering them. So. The first one, the first question, um, what it was about China and how I came up, you know, staying in China for two years and then how I came up, um, how I, um, yeah, ended up living here in Latvia and if my stay was permanent. So a couple of years ago, I... I was sent in China um, for my third year of studies. I majored in international law and during my third year, um, I was an exchange student. So I spent a whole year in Wuhan, which is in the middle of China. And yeah, I studied there for, for a year. And that's the time when I met my partner, who's from Latvia. <laughs> So after that year, I finished um, I finished the program and I decided to stay for one more year in China. So I went back for the summer just to bring more things with me. And I went back, I flew back to, to China and we stayed um, in Wuhan for a little while. And I think after two months, we decided to move. So we moved to the south of China. We moved to Shenzhen, which is five minutes from Hong Kong, really. And after that, um, so I took a break for, for a year and then I had to come back to finish everything. So um, for six months, I, I was a part-time student and working part-time as well. And when, um, when I graduated, um, we knew that we had to come back to Latvia for family reasons. So we came back here and yeah, we've been living here for two years so far and um, our stay is definitely not permanent. At the moment we are, um, my partner is working full time outside the house and I'm working in the house full time, uh, creating patterns and um, I will be selling yarn very soon and <clears throat> And our goal is to move back to France, hopefully very time, very hopefully very soon. And we'd like to settle in the middle of the countryside, buy a piece of land, and you know, live there. So that is the plan for the future. We are not going to stay in Latvia. So yeah, that was the very first question. So thank you so much for asking. Um, the second one was. Um, I'm trying to remember because I just recorded the podcast <laughs> right before recording again and I answered the question so I remember the question. The second question was about yarn and I've been asked if I would be a yarn, um, a fiber, a colorway, what would I be? Um, and if I was planning to sell yarn in the future. So Yes, I'm definitely planning to sell yarn in the future, in a very soon future, actually. <laughs> and if I would be a yarn, um, that's a very hard question. Um, I would be not, I cannot say rustic, but I think I would definitely be in this kind of yarn category, you know, natural yarns, wool, wooly yarn. Um, and for the colors, I guess something close to that because it's very versatile and you know when you know a little bit about dyeing 
I think you could dye that in any kind of color really and that would be gorgeous so I will probably be that I don't know about the weight but yeah I, do, I love this color so I would be this color in and I could dye myself um, and for the weight I guess I'd like to have this one in sport because then you can you know sport is quite versatile as well you could double it triple it make anything with it <laughs> so yeah um there's the whole chickadee family on the balcony right now the whole family meaning like there's 10 of them and lastly um i've done some botanical experiments lately and i thought i could show you so When I first arrived here in Latvia, so about two years ago, I first bought this African violet in a shop and it was blooming. And I think it bloomed a second time after I bought it. But right after that, it stopped completely. And it hadn't bloomed ever since. And I was really frustrated because, you know, I was taking care of it, I was watering it and, it wasn't blooming and I was yeah just a bit frustrated and two weeks ago really I said enough is enough <laughs> and so the plant grew so much actually and there was so I don't know if you can see but there's two mother plants inside and there was actually a third one so I just thought that maybe you know they needed more space so I removed one of them and replanted it. I added more soil and one week after, literally, it started blooming again. And it's been blooming for, I don't know, one week already. And yeah, I just, I just love how nature works really. It's, you know, it's a bit like, it's a bit like us really, you know, when people, when there's too many people in the same room, you need more air, you know, you need to breathe. Well, I guess it's a bit like the same for the plants. Like, we are, you know, it's too crowded, we need more space. So they had more space and they started blooming again. Very philosophical, I think. <laughs> My second experiment, um, I read, online last year that you could actually keep your bulbs um you know bulbs that you buy for christmas and things like that you can actually keep them um in a box something like that and during this time of the year they should start spreading again and i was a bit skeptical because i i just didn't didn't know how a bulb could sprout again if you would keep it in the dark um, without, you know, without, without sunlight and without water. It did. I kept them in the box for a year and last week I checked them out and they were sprouting. So I just decided to um, give them water. I, I have a couple of them in, um, in jars that I have bought, little jars like this. And I have a couple of them in little glasses with soil and I'm just you know having different experiments trying to see which one will grow faster and so far water is winning they don't they don't seem to need soil they are growing like this and that's that's super super exciting like nature things you know how how it works and how little I know about things like that and it really makes me want to learn more really and yeah I just want to see how many year, how many years I will be able to keep these and making them bloom again and again it's just so much fun because for my whole life we've been buying bulbs at the end of the year and once they're done we usually I mean we always we always throw them away and 
I didn't know that you could keep them and just reuse them for the next year. That is so neat. So, yeah, the water is a bit dirty. I should clean that up a bit, but that's that's just wonderful. I mean, oh, really. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is um, something else that I've been making for the shop. Um, <clears throat> I've been making more pendants, <clears throat> sorry, more little pendants for the shop with heather, which is my favorite flower. So <clears throat> I gathered heather at the beginning of autumn and I've been pressing it and I'm making pendants right now. I've been making quite a bit of them for the shop and at the moment, uh, I'm just I'm just waiting for um, the packaging to arrive um, because I I actually buy the packaging um, in a hospital. The patients are this this they have a special building where they have um, different workshops. They have cardboard and um, just different activities, and then they sell. Um, for example, in my case, packaging for, for the shop. And then the money that they raise is for them, you know, for the hospital. So I just thought that it was a very good cause. And I will be, I will go back on Saturday to check out the boxes um, that they made. And um, yeah, just bring them with me back home. And yeah. And for the yarn that is exactly the same thing i bought a lot of bag um so it's recycled paper and it's handmade by the patients in the hospital um so yeah i didn't want to have i didn't want to use any any sort of plastic for my packaging so yeah it's good for the environment and it's good for it's a good cause as well it's um yeah it's just bringing money to the hospital and things like that so yeah really really pleased about that so i guess that's it i've been sitting on my computer for a little while now you know just talking and recording and things like that and then i will have to edit um everything and post the podcast hopefully today so yeah anyway uh thank you so much for uh, spending a little bit of your time with me today and yeah hopefully i will chat with you in two weeks i will keep you updated for the shop um on instagram so i'm b mondrins on instagram and on ravelry in our ravelry ravelry group i will open up a thread um for things related to the shop. So yeah, I wish you a beautiful weekend and I will chat with you later. Bye.